All right. Today we are here with a special guest, Jared, who is a former Tesla employee. Let's talk a little bit about Optimus. When I saw Optimus putting batteries into a, a tray at Tesla AI headquarters, I immediately thought of you because I knew you're Gigafactory Nevada. What do you think about the ability of Optimus to do some work at Gigafactory Nevada with different battery stuff? What do you think Optimus would be good at doing? Yeah, by its design, it's going to be suited for tasks that historically have been done by a human. In the, the automation space, there's, we break up tasks we want to automate through some type of robot that might be the big yellow or red robots moving things around it could also be yeah it could be one of the big arms the big six axis industrial robots or it could be some other type of robotic application with servos and and servo drives doing xyz gantry scare robots there's lots of other form factors that robots fit into historically the Automation space has been filled with robots that do very repeatable tasks. If you need something to be slightly not perfectly positioned each time, then you have to get into the space of using type, some type of vision program where you'd have the robot come and take some type of a picture, use that picture to figure out what different offsets are for the positioning of this part. You take a picture, compare it to a reference image, you figure out how many millimeters you're off and X, Y, Z and rotation. And then you take your predefined path for the robot, add offsets and tell it move three millimeters to the left and two millimeters up and pick it here. And that works okay. It's a pain to set up. There's a lot of time associated with stopping and taking those pictures and lighting. Anything can confuse these very basic systems. You know, if you have any type of lighting issues or any type of wow. dirt or, or FOD foreign objects in the frame, like it just won't work. Those systems historically have been valuable when you can get them to work, but they are a little bit finicky here and there. Optimus kind of gives you the ability to have a predefined task, unlike PLCs and standard computer programming, where you write every single line of code and say, go here and pick this part. And here's an offset, figure out what the offset is. You don't need to do any of that with a system based on full self-driving that takes images and video in, figures out where things are positionally in space, and then can relate that to outputs. I think Optimus is more complex in a lot of ways because you're trying to figure out more things and have more joints and degrees of freedom with the robot itself, as opposed to a, a vehicle that only has a couple different degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. You got to keep the robot standing and right for a while. There are a lot more complexities with it, but the severity of which things can go wrong are so much lower that it becomes maybe not an easier task, but an easier task in a lot of aspects because if you don't pick the part up exactly right, or you don't move exactly right, the worst case that's going to happen is you drop something or the robot moves. The stakes of that severity level when something doesn't work exactly right versus being in a vehicle, moving at 80 miles an hour, bot flying by other people, they're extremely high in the automobile space. The robot space can make a lot of progress really quick because what happens when you mess up isn't that big of a deal. Even as opposed to the large robots in standard industrial automation, you mess something up with those and you can cause a lot of damage because those are really big robots moving a lot of weight around often. Um, and you can cause a lot of damage with those. With Optimus, you're looking at jobs that have been deemed as, hey, we'll still have a human do this for now because the amount of time it would take to set up a robot to do this is large and it still might not work. There will always be that level of these jobs are still in the human realm and these jobs have been automated. As automation continues to improve, that line will move, but there will still be that line. Like there will still be a, a line where humans are doing a, a certain task and Optimus just really expands the, the capability of moving that line in a large jump. Cool. So like if the robot drops a battery at worst case, you have to recycle the battery. Yeah. But if the KUKA robot 
misplaces the battery, you could potentially damage your workstation, something like that. Just putting your engineer hat on, different tasks at Gigafactory Nevada, putting batteries in modules, testing batteries, taking batteries out of boxes. Maybe that's automated already, but they also put batteries back into boxes occasionally. Thinking about Optimus, what do you think Optimus would be good at? What's some of those really boring, repeatable tasks that uh, humans are doing today? Yeah, Optimus would definitely be good at a lot of those tasks. And back to what you automate and what you don't automate. Sometimes the line is, yes, this would be too hard to automate. And sometimes it's, no, this is something good to automate. We should do it. Other times it's, yes, that would be a really good task to automate, but we need people, resources, equipment, and floor space to build that equipment. We need engineers to program it, keep it running. If you run out of that, you can throw people at the problem. Optimus fits into this space of ha having a task you want to automate, but it would take a a while to do it in the old way with robots and automation. And especially if you have tasks that are changing all the time or equipment that is changing and not mm. constant, if you're always in a state of flux where things are never a steady state, man, taking the time to set up equipment and program things to do something for only a couple months and then have it change and then have to have the people come back in and redo everything again, there's a lot of overhead in that from the engineering side, you're paying a lot of engineers to do a lot of stuff. If you have a product like Optimus, that's more flexible, you can give it a task, teach it tasks and use employees to teach the robot what they want it to do, as opposed to having an entire team of engineers to program equipment that allows you to set up and, and make tasks that are a candidate for automation, but would have been way too much work for the amount of time that task is, is going to be done. That allows you to use Optimus to automate those tasks where you can actually get a, a return on that time that you're going to spend automating it. I know there's some funny meme going around on LinkedIn about why do a task in five minutes when you can fail to automate it in an hour or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Automation is great when you're going to know that you're going to repeatedly do a task. If you mm -hmm. don't know if you're going to repeatedly do it or for how long, then you've got to always do this ROI calculation on how much time I'm going to spend to automate it and how long are we actually going to do that task. Optimus can lower the bar on how long it takes to automate these kind of human tasks that we have humans doing right now. It really lowers the bar on that and, and allows you to do a lot more with robotics than you could have in the past. As a controls engineer into automation, what do you think is next for you? If you want to talk about some things you're looking at either with AI or with the potential role, uh, roles that you're looking at. Yeah. When I got into you know, automation, computer programming are very similar. The programming field used to be you sit down at a computer and everything you need in the language you're programming, whether it's C or Python, or whether it's ladder logic and PLCs, and there's hundreds of different languages and all the syntax and information you have to know to program those languages as large language models and AI get better. They're getting good at programming, um, not on their own, but through a prompt helping automate work automation engineers used to do leveraging the tools of the day, specifically AI and, and all of the things that it offers, I think very valuable for anybody in an industry becoming more automated. You can look at automation as, Hey, this is going to take my job. Or you can look at automation as, Hey, I can use this ability to do more work for the same amount of time that I put into a, a given project. You get paid on the value that you add and create with whatever you do. And so this tool, you know, AI, large language models, machine learning, it's the same as other tools in that for years, I would take PLCs and program them to automate things and create value by being able to do something repeatedly correctly year and year and year for customers. AI is just another tool in that tool belt. Understanding AI and where it can be used, not only today, but where it's going is very important for me and my career development, as well as everybody in, in general. Have you tried to see if ChatGPT or Grok uh, knows these 
programming languages for controls? I know that it knows a lot of computer programming languages. I have not tried to get it to write ladder logic or controls specific languages, but if I had to guess, it could be done if it's not already capable, especially because there's a lot of languages that you can program structured text and, and other text-based languages that are, other than some syntax differences, very similar to a lot of the computer programming languages that it already can do. Yeah, I think that part of it will be doable. One difference with industrial automation as opposed to writing some computer programs is it's one thing to write a computer program that changes some pixels on a screen and does some mm -hmm. stuff inside a computer. It's slightly different to do that with code that is going to affect the real world. There's an understanding of physics and the products this code will interact with the real world. And then also the maintenance standpoint, any industrial automation stuff, any code that you write, you want to make sure it is supported by the maintenance staff. If you use chat GPT to write some code and works, but then quits working and nobody can figure out how to fix it. You're going to be getting a call at whatever time of night or weekend, you're going to get that call to, to have to fix this thing. So there's, there's some slight nuances to, to how it changes when working in the automation space, but I, the days of just sitting there and writing everything from scratch are slowly coming to a close. So I just realized that I did some programming similar to what some machines would have been like only in two dimensions in second or third grade. I, I liked the Apple two C mm -hmm. and I play around with basic and I was never a great programmer. I knew if then and go to this about, so I made a program where it, it mapped the outline of the United States. And so it did a, like a great job at the great lakes and then went up to Maine down the East coast and Florida. But then there's some error that I made and I took a wrong turn and the rest of the map, uh, was all flipped. <laughs> the first part looked really good, but I couldn't figure out where the mistake was made. It's somewhere in the Gulf of America. <laughs> uh, a lot of times with programming, you can start an approach and be like, oh, this is working great until you get to something that approach completely fails at, and you either have to figure out why or throw that approach away and start a, a completely new approach if it's an unsolvable problem. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jared, for sharing a bit about automation. I, I think it's a really exciting time to be yeah. in automation. People are leaning on AI to automate pieces of their business. You know, ultimately that's to you know, make things more efficient and get rid of the, the boring and repeatable things and yeah. free up people to do more interesting work. I'm Bradford Ferguson with rebellionaire.com. And with that, I'll say bye for now.